Hello everyone, my name is Afina Lisa and I'm the Head of Field and Lab Operations at Omicron. Today I will be showing you how you can set up the Pipping Prep. We use the Pipping Prep machine that is made by Safe Science to do the size selection in a fully automated way in the Holotype HLA protocol. The reason why we use this machine is because it is completely hands-off, it is very easy to use, it can produce very accurate and clean libraries of the Holotype HLA kit, and it reduces the chance of making a mistake when doing it manually. So the way that we set it up is that first we turn, up, uh, we turn on the machine by using a button in the back. This pretty much boots the software of the Sage Science of the Pipping Prep on the monitor and this is the only thing that you see. The first thing that you want to do is log in into the, uh, into the software. To do that, you just click on the Pipping Prep logo and you put in the password, which is always PIPS, P-I-P-S, it's very easy. Yes. And it logs in. The way that you know that it has logged in is that you can see multiple tabs at the very top here on the, uh, on the software. So the first thing, the next thing rather, that we want to do is actually set up, tell the machine what we want it to select. To do that, to set up the protocol, we click on the protocol editor over here, it's the second tab. And we input all of the information that we need. Now, we use, for this process, we use the 1.5% dye-free agarose cassettes. Um, these cassettes do not contain any ethidum bromide and they are based on fluorescently labeled markers. So what we do is that we use an internal marker that is fluorescently labeled, we mix it with our library, and then we use only one lane in this cassette. I will show you exactly what it looks like in a moment. So for this, we need to tell the machine which lane we will use and exactly what it will be collecting. Otherwise, it will have no idea. So in order to set up the protocol, all we have to do is click on the load button down here where we have saved our default protocols. Click on the protocol that we're using. We always name, name them Holotype HLA, so we know what we're using. We will only be using lane one, so this is the only thing that we need, and click select. As soon as we do that, we notice that all of the necessary information is imported into our protocol. So we will start collecting from 650 base pairs to 1300 base pairs. The target of 975 it automati is automatically calculated by the machine and doesn't really mean anything. What is important is to make sure that the reference lane here is the same lane as the one that we will load our marker and our library. And this is just showing us that we are doing a broad size selection over here. So once we've told the machine what we want it to do, we want to go to the factory setup tab right, right here and make sure that this number, the base to threshold ratio, is always 0.02. The number here depends on the application we are using and the cassette type that we are using. So we just accept the change if we change that, and that's it. So we can actually begin with the next step. So the next thing we would like to do is calibrate the machine. In order to calibrate the machine, comes with a calibration picture in a pouch like this. You actually get that the first time that you buy the, the machine. It comes with it, it is, it is reusable, and you don't have to buy it again. So the calibration picture, it comes in this little sock over here. Um, the pouch contains this plastic picture. It's orange from one side and it has a black stripe on the other side. This, as I said, is reusable and you, you can use it every time. I usually calibrate my machine one time before every run. It only takes seconds anyway, so it doesn't actually uh, matter. So what you want to do is take this, open the machine, and put it with a black stripe down, covering the LED lights inside the machine. Then you just close the lid, and you click on the calibrate button down here. A pop-up window pops up. For the pipping prep machine, the target IPH is 
So everything seems correct and I continue with the calibration. So I click on the calibrate button right here, down here. And I look at the calibration status right here to tell me uh, how far it is. It literally takes seconds, it won't take any time at all. It tells you that it's underway and it's done. So now that I see that the calibration is okay, I just click exit and I'm ready for my next step. So now that we have finished the calibration, we are ready to test our cassette. We are using the 1.5% dye-free cassettes, as we said, with internal standards, meaning that the fluorescent standards will be mixed with the library and then they will be loaded all in one lane. Each cassette has five lanes. You can see that each lane is numbered one through five. Each lane is essentially one column that is filled with agarose gel and it branches down into two, about halfway down the middle. Um, there are uh, ports, there are ports for the negative electrodes to go in on one side and ports for the positive electrodes to go into the other side. There are two ports per lane for the positive electrodes, if you notice closely. This is where we are actually uh, loading our library. And this is the collection chamber that we will be collecting the library out of after the run. So what we want to do is put this cassette into the machine. And even though we will only be using one lane for this run, because we only use one lane for every run, for every holotype run, these cassettes are usable. So you can use another lane at a different time until you have used through all of them. So before we put it in, we want to make sure that we get rid of any bubbles next to the collection chambers. So in order to do that, you can just invert the cassette, you can shake it, tap it, make sure that everything is gone. And that's all. So then we put it into the machine and we uncover it, we take off the tapes from, to, to completely uh, open up the port. So we want to make sure that we open up the tapes very carefully so that the buffer that is in there doesn't splatter all over the place. And we also want to make sure that we uncover both sides, both from the positive electrodes and on the negative electrodes. Then the next step will be to refill with buffer into the, uh, into the ports for the electrodes. If buffer is missing for more than three, th three fold, fourths of the space, then you definitely want to refill it to go up to the same space, same level as the plastic. The reason why is because, as in any typical electrophoresis, if you don't have enough buffer, the current will start running and then bloop, it will fall over and then it will continue again. So electrophoresis will be inefficient. So you want to make sure that you have enough buffer in all of the lanes so that the current flows through the lane evenly and equally across the entire run. So in order to do that, we take a buffer it's an electrophoresis buffer actually that comes into the with the peeping prep kit with the peeping prep cassettes and using a pipette a p1000 pipette or even a pasteur pipette if you have one you want to refill all of the lanes with buffer up to the same level as the plastic of the cassette once you have done that the next step will be to take um, another pipette set it at 40 microliters and then go ahead and remove all of the buffer from the collection chambers from all of the collection chambers of the cassette. We will empty them out and then we will put 40 microliters of fresh buffer into every uh, collection chamber. The reason why is because that's where our library will be collected. And even though we will only be using one lane, we want to do the same for all of the lanes so that the current flows freely again. So, I will just take a new tip. And go all the way straight into the collection chamber. Remove everything. And throw this away. So now that we emptied the collection chambers, we want to add 40 microliters of fresh buffer. That's where the library will be collected after, uh, after the run. So I just go all the way in and I fill up my little well and that's it. Now, next step will be to cover the collection chambers. 
The reason why we want to cover the collection chambers with a thin strip of tape, nothing special really, is because during um, electrophoresis uh, there is current and current produces heat. Heat causes evaporation, basic physics here. Because 40 microliters is a very, very small volume, we want to make sure that the volume remains exactly like that in, during the run. That's where the library will be collected. We don't want it to be over dilute or under, uh, or under dilute. We want to be at a certain concentration. So I just cover the collection chambers with a thin uh, strip of tape and I close the machine. The next thing I want to do is test my cassette. Make sure that the current flows freely through the whole cassette, there is nothing blocking it and there are no issues. So to do that, I click on the test button here on the screen. This pops up another window and this will just run the test really quickly. It is not very unusual that something that the cassette fails the, the first time that we take it out of a new, uh, a new packaging. It's just because it's been sitting there for a while and salt may have accumulated in, in one place. To get rid of that, one of the things that you can do is kind of shake it around a little bit to mix in the salt, but that's all you need to do. In this case, it's passed and that's all we need. So we click return and we are ready to load the library. So for the library, we have it right here. This is our uh, light gated uh, and ampure bead um, cleaned up library. We have 30 microliters in here and what we want to do is add 10 microliters of marker. Now, in the Pippin Prep reagent kit, there is two fluorescently labeled markers that come with it. So the fluorescently labeled markers, one of them is a 50 base per fragment and the other one is a 150 base per fragment. Both of them fluorescently labeled. So we take 10 microliters of the mixture of those two markers and I will put it straight into my library. The mixture is pretty viscous, so you may want to pipette slowly to make sure that you actually pick up the 10 microliters as you expect. Once you have put it in, you want to give it a quick vortex and a spin, and then take 40 microliters of this and load it directly into your cassette. In fact, Think about it. We were saying earlier that we generally want to have um, equal volumes of, of um, well, we didn't say it earlier, but we will say it now. We want to have equal volumes of liquid at every point. So every time we want to put something into the cassette, we want to take something out of it first to prevent uh, overflowing of any kind of port on the cassette. So what I want to do is take a tip, set it at 40 microliters, and remove 40 microliters of buffer from the loading port where I want to load my library. I only need to do that for the lane that I am using, that's where I'm going to uh, load the library. So I took 40 out and I am ready to put 40 in, essentially the entire volume of the library. Even if you have a little bit more or a little bit less, you just want to load absolutely everything in it. And you load it just like you would load any kind of gel. It's no different at all. Then we want to close the cassette and click start. Once we click start, the software will tell us did you calibrate your machine, is it ready to go, did you do everything that you need to do to start the run? Yes, I did. So I click start again and it begins. So once the run starts, we can see here that the current on the lane that we are using goes up, whereas the other ones remain close to zero. That's because they are not being used. We can see here that the, the lane that we are using is also the reference lane because that's what we told the machine. We can see here that the progress bar has started counting. The runtime is about 40, between 42 to 45 minutes. It depends a little bit on the machine itself, but it doesn't actually affect uh, much. Uh, and then the last 8 to 10 minutes of the entire run is the elution time, 
What that means is that essentially right now our fragments are separating just like any typical electrophoresis and then once the fragment sizes that we want to collect, that we ask the machine to collect, reach the uh, collection chamber, this light will turn orange and that means that the elution uh, process has started. Once the run has finished, everything will turn grey again just like the other lanes are. So now that the run has finished, everything has turned grey, just like we were expecting it to, what we want to do is collect our size-selected library out of the machine. So we open the lid, remove the plastic cover that we used to uh, cover the collection chambers before the run. We take a tip, a pipette and a tip, set at 40 microliters. I set it at 40 microliters because that is the volume that of buffer that we put into the collection, uh, collection chamber before the run. So I go straight into the collection chamber and I remove everything. It is not highly unusual to, um, to find a little bit more or a little bit library in the collection chamber after the run. So that's why I go in again and I make sure that I remove absolutely everything until it's completely empty. In the very end, that's our library. Why let it go to waste? So we want to put the library in a 1.5 ml low bind tube. It is very, very important that from this step onwards we use only low bind tubes. The reason why is because the libraries have these really strange properties that they make them get stuck on the walls of the plastic and the low bind tubes are just like regular tubes but they, their internal walls are treated with this substance to prevent them from getting stuck. As a result we don't lose any and we have plenty to, um, to move towards the end. Now. We want to keep our library on ice, generally speaking, um, and then continue to the next steps. So now that we have collected our size selected library and we put it in ice in a low bind tube, we also want to clean up the machine. The maintenance of the machine is actually very, very easy and quick. All we have to do is take this cleaning cassette or rinse cassette. It also comes with the machine and it is also reusable. It looks exactly like a regular cassette except it is completely empty, it doesn't have the arrows that the others have. We fill it in with water, just milky water will do. Put it in the machine, close the lid and leave it for 30 seconds. Every time you close the lid, because the electrodes come down, they will go into the water and they will rinse themselves with the water. Over a long time of usage, you may, uh, you may end up with excess salt accumulation because of the electrophoresis buffer. So it's always very highly recommended that you do one clean of the machine at the end of its day. It only takes 30 seconds anyway. And then once that time is up, which it can stay longer, just take off your rinse cassette, dump the water into the sink, and you're done. That's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or need any clarifications, feel free to contact any of us at Omixon. Um, either go to our website www.omixon.com or email support at or call us, text us, you know, Skype, anything you want. Bye!